Hi there, welcome to the video. As you notice, my voice is a bit, like, rough at the moment. That's because I've been ill for the last five days, but I still wanted to make this video. So, before I begin the actual full explanation of what um, my point is, I'm going to be using a little example to help illustrate it. So, imagine you're in a fantasy world and you have a black wood elf friend. And they tell you that someone's being racist to them and they need your help to sort this out. So, you go with them and you encounter a white dwarf. Before anybody can say anything, the white dwarf immediately calls your friend a knife here. Now, depending on how you look at this from, say for instance, a modern world's perspective, like our own, knife here, considering that this is used against your friend and not you, you would believe that, hmm, maybe they're actually using this as a slur against them because they're black. But, if you looked at this from the fantasy world perspective they come from, knife here is actually a slur used against them due to the fact that this person is an elf. There we go, that's that example over. Now, if you're confused at what exactly I was saying about, well, modern world race is different to fantasy world race. And the reason for this is due to the cultures they come from. Now, for instance, our world has a vast array of cultures from all ends of the world, right? All over the world, everywhere you go, there's a different culture, right? Fantasy worlds tend to have one or just a few cultures from specific regions made to make this fantasy world. Unless you make a fantasy world based entirely off of like all the cultures of the world, in which case that was one of the fair, rare few ones that you'd get, but still. And basically when it comes to the cultures of them, they, they kind of have it where there were no people of different skin color, because they didn't know they existed. Now let me explain how this happened. So. We're going to be looking at the modern perspective for a bit, then we'll go back to the fantasy, but for first, let's explain why race is based off of skin color rather than, you know, different species, much like how fantasy worlds are. Alright, so, for our world, what happened is, um, we encountered each other, and we believed we were different skin colors, and then we started referring to each other as different race, and so on and so forth, people have just been referring to... Anytime someone is involved in it and they're different skin color, they say, oh, you're a different race to me, that sort of shit. But it's actually scientifically inaccurate, and the reason for this is because we're not different races. Because the difference between someone who is from one race and another is that your origins of your species. For instance, dwarves and elves have completely different origins and differences between them. Like, there's more differences there to them than there are uh, similarities. Whereas with humans, the only difference between us really is our slight appearance, and um, basically skin color sometimes. I mean, gender technically counts, but I mean, eh, I mean, like, you still basically can be like the female equivalent of someone else, or the male equivalent of someone else. It's interchangeable, basically. But the true reason why this is inaccurate, where it comes to being racist against one another based off of skin color being defined as race, the reason for this is because, it turns out, archaeologists found out that the oldest uh, human remains in our world are from Africa, hundreds of thousands of years ago. And they discovered that um, every human in the world that exists today has one common ancestor of a woman from Africa hundreds of thousands of years ago. And so the theory is, what happened was, um, in Africa hundreds of thousands of years ago, we basically discovered, mm, look, there's a place over there we can go to, you know, with, uh, with uh, Europe. So, some of us stayed in Africa, some of us went to Europe, and those that went to Europe began spreading out, and as they built settlements, and they stayed in the northern area, you know, the northern continent, they basically had their skin pigmentation changed. It became lighter after generation after generation. And the reason for this is due to the Earth's rotation around the sun, where it's more of a southern side. So that's why people who live in the southern continents tend to be a bit more darker skinned, because they need to be protected from the sun, whereas those from the northern side are lighter skinned because they don't need as much protection. And, yeah, the fact that this is just based off of the sun itself giving us our skin color and then hating someone based off a skin color is completely irrational it, it never makes sense but anyway after we had basically changed skin color <laughs> kind of <laughs> we continued to spread out to different areas europe asia and in some cases we even got to america at one point hence why the native americans got there but we don't know how they got there that easily there may be a theory for it but the point is we basically spread out from africa and we basically changed our pigmentation and everything but the one thing that everyone had done was forgotten where they came from. 
they all forgot they came from Africa. So as time went on, they created mythologies and cultures and even religions based off of where they ended up. Hence why you have varying of the three in all around the world. And what happened was we basically kind of forgot that anybody else existed besides our specific um, peoples or our regions, basically. It's why um, in Europe they didn't really know about Africa and they didn't really know about America because they never really been to it. And, you know, they didn't really have, have the technology to do so, like, tens of thousands of years ago, did they? <laughs> so, they create these cultures based off of what they know, and they make mythologies to explain certain phenomena they don't understand. For instance, when it comes to Greek mythology of how the seasons change, and um, it's completely different to how the actual, you know, scientific way of it is. But everyone has a different variation of how things happen, like... When the sun moves, as they would see it as, because they believe the sun was what was moving, not the earth moving around the sun. For Norse mythology, they believe that Loki's children, uh, no, not Loki's children, Loki's child Fenrir's kids were chasing the sun and the moon. Um, for Greek mythology, they believe that it was being um, pulled by Apollo um, and on his chariot, and, and you know, and so on and so forth, basically. And, yeah, th that's showing how different the cultures are. So, by that logic, what it means is that every culture in the world, no matter how big or small it is, has equally just as much right to be existent as another. So, basically, the Celtic mythology and culture has just as much right to exist as American um, mythology and culture, and... Asian mythology and culture, and African mythology and culture, and so on and so forth, and vice versa with every other culture. Like, every single culture and mythology that exists to this day has just as much right to exist because of everybody coming from the same origins. But, unfortunately, some people don't get this memo. But before I continue this part, let me explain how fantasy worlds work. <laughs> You see, with fantasy worlds, they're created based off of these mythologies and cultures that existed tens of thousands of years ago that didn't know about the actual existence of their ancestors and, you know, anybody else other than themselves. So, because they didn't know about the existence of black people and anybody else of a different skin color to themselves, what they did is when they made conflicts based on these mythological creatures like elves and dwarves, they made it based off of different races rather than skin color. So it continues on in pretty much any mythology that didn't know about skin color. Now the conflicts in these mythologies were based on ideals or races and, you know, actual species and so on and so forth. Color was never a thing in any of these, um, you know, in any of these mythical depictions. And the reason for it, because, well, they didn't know about it. At least in the northern ones and in Asia. I'm not entirely sure in Africa, because I know they can have different skin tones. But I highly doubt skin would be a reason to hate someone in their mythology either, in culture. So when you have it where, after thousands of years, you encounter other people of different cultures, and you encounter people of different skin colors, you still stick to your culture, and you still stick to your actual mythology, because obviously this is what your closer ancestors have. Because when I say closer ancestors, I mean more of those that have been in the last thousand years rather than the hundreds of thousands of years that your species has existed, basically. So, yeah, this is why the racism from the modern world of it being based on skin color does not work with racism based in fantasy worlds because skin color didn't exist in those worlds. So having the two interlock and try and make them cooperate in the same world or depiction or franchise or anything like that does not make sense and here comes my next point when it comes to the rings of power and when it comes to um other fantasy and science fiction worlds like for science fiction it's a case of there's like you know aliens that literally don't give a shit about what skin color you are they just see you as a different coating <laughs> that's it but Moving on to that part, though, is with the Rings of Power, it doesn't make sense because what they're trying to do is look at it this perspective. Imagine someone makes a story in Greek mythology, right? It's based in Greece, all about Greek mythology. It's their entire story. Imagine it's the story of Heracles, right? 
Now, imagine if some guy from Britain just said, no, 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 I, I know you, your story is amazing and everything, and they're like, yes, it's like, yeah, and it's been translated, like, 30 different languages, like, yes, I have done a good story, yes, and they'll be like, no, but, um, I want you to put a Scottish guy in there, and then this person who has just written a series of stories, world-renowned, and translated everywhere because everyone loves this, is now being told that their story isn't the best because there's not a Scottish guy in it. Now explain to me how how awkward it would be if, you know, you've got Heracles there fighting, um, the, the, you know, the, the Hydra or fighting the Golden uh, Lion. And then just some random guy with bagpipes just comes up and is like, Hey, Hercules, look what you're doing! And, and it would make no sense. How would a white guy from Scotland who's ginger and pale skin get to Greece when they're more tanned and... You know, it, it's, well, Greece, and Greek mythology, tens of thousands of years ago. It would not make sense, not only to a cultural part of the actual story, but also a regional and scientifically time-based one. And that's kind of what the uh, Amazon's Rings of Power are doing, and so are the Game of Thrones prequel, but I really don't care about Game of Thrones, to be honest, so that doesn't bother me. But, um... The Rings of Power one bothers me because they're claiming Tolkien uh, wasn't good at what he did because um, he didn't base it on everyone's culture and they're saying like they want to modernize it. But the thing is, you can't modernize a fantasy world that's based off of the past because in the past they didn't know about this stuff. It's like the Native Americans that used to sacrifice one another to appease the rain god. They didn't know anybody uh, or anything better. They didn't know anything other than that. And then if you were to go and tell them, oh no, you did something stupid, you shouldn't have done that, well then, how are they supposed to know? You're looking down at them from a future perspective where we know more than anybody has known in the past, and then acting all high and mighty, whereas they would never have known. And that's kind of the thing. You're trying to change something that's in the past that shouldn't be. Like, for instance, where Tolkien, when he wrote the books, there were black people that were around him, but he didn't make anything based off of them because he wasn't making it based off of African culture or anything like that. He was making it based off of Northern European culture and mythology. That's He wanted to make it based off that specific world, and he had a reason for it. I think it was during, like, something was happening with the French. But the thing is, though, is that that's based off that specific mythology and culture, much like how... Other stories are based off of specific mythologies and cultures. And yet people want to change them because, oh, we we see that he's successful and he has stuff that we don't have. And, and we want the money. So, no, you, you did bad, Tolkien. Give us your thingy so we can fix it for you. Like that. Like, they're trying to make stuff that doesn't make any sense in these settings. Like, for instance, with... The Black Dwarf and Elf doesn't make sense because the dwarves live underground and the elves live in the northern trees, you know, the forests. So how their ancestors would have become, you know, white from being black in the first place would make no sense in Tolkien's world if it's based off of northern, you know, European culture. <laughs> Instead of making their own stories, they'd rather take another story and change it. And the worst thing about that, honestly, is because they're making a prequel to it, so they're saying that all these people of different backgrounds and ethnicities have existed, but in the, uh, the, not, you know, during this prequel, it's the Second Age, but during the Third Age, they're nowhere to be seen, meaning what happened to them? If anything, that just puts the implications that they were all wiped out, which is way worse, because it makes it seem like they were murdered and, and completely destroyed, and, and that's just even worse. Like, if you had made it based on, like, a sequel to it, maybe it could have worked, but a prequel saying that all these people are here and then they're nowhere to be seen afterwards is really messed up to think about it. What happened to the people? We want to know what happened to them. <laughs> but, yeah. And then trying to say that your ideas are better because you want to be included in this, because look, if you looked at the super fan videos, you'd know it's all about the whole, was it, diversity, inclusivity, representation, that sort of thing. And it's the thing is, it's not based off their cultures. Like, they're coming from different backgrounds and stuff, but it's not based off of their culture. It's based off of the, Nor the Northern European culture. If they wanted a story like Tolkien's work based off of, you know, their own culture, they should just make it. Like, th that's what you should do. If you want a story, a fantasy fiction made based off of your culture, and if there's none, make one yourself. 
Who knows? It could be a, ma you know, a mashing. No, I'm trying to say a smashing, but I keep saying mashing. <laughs> it could be a smashing success. Who knows? Maybe you could become a famous author by writing a story based off of your own cultures. I mean, it would definitely be interesting. Or find someone who has made it, and if they're not as popular as you believe they should be, promote them. Make it so they're heard. Make it so more people get to see their stories and get to see the amazing culture that's based off of your, uh, you know, their writing. But they don't do that because that's too hard for them. They'd rather just take something that already exists and change it the way they've done with everything else. And it's honestly sad. But, yeah. But anyway, that's why I wanted to make this video. I wanted to explain the differences between how race is perceived in a fantasy world, in our world, why they don't work in the same sort of situation and why even though we are different skin colors even though we have different cultures we all come from the same origin point so if anybody tries to be racist to someone else based entirely on skin color not only is that entirely and in uh, scientifically incorrect to do so but also there is a high possibility that person is more closely related to you than you actually know also, stop trying to change stories based off of specific cultures to fit your own narrative because that's just awful. Please just write your own stories. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and you see my point that you shouldn't judge people based off of skin color. It should be based off of freaking actions. Because you may be the most ugly person in the world, but you could be the nicest. And you may be the most attractive looking person in the world, but you could be the most horrible person in the world. It's one of those situations. And... Hopefully, if you're enjoying this, maybe stick around on my videos, watch some other stuff, maybe my D&D &D stuff. I'll be uploading more Drakenamaki stuff later on. Um, since I'm ill, I can't really do much anyway. And um, yeah, hopefully see you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye.